up YouTube? I haven't done like a sitting and talking video in a while. I feel so formal. Feels weird. I feel like we might have a cleavage situation in this. So today I wanted to do a video that I've wanted to do for a long time. I kind of did it before, but this I wanted to go a little bit more in depth about my personal business as opposed to just what the topic of my last video was, was how to become an online trainer. And so this video is like, relating to how I became an online trainer, kind of why I became an online trainer, how I like function as a business owner, my advice for people wanting to do this as well, stuff like that. You guys know the drill, how Q&As go. I had you guys ask me questions on Instagram, and I'm gonna answer them. For those of you who are new to my channel or don't know who I am or don't know what I do, my name is Lynette. I run an online personal training business. It's just called Lynette Marie Fitness. I've had my certification from NASM for oh, over two years. In the first year that I had my certification, I worked in a gym, and the second year, this past year, I've worked uh, primarily online. A little bit about me uh, professionally, I guess. I never get to talk about this. I went to college for just two years, and I studied business, business admin, and then after that, I pretty much just worked. Most of my work experience is in sales and management. I was a manager at a couple different retail stores, and I did real estate off and on for like two years, but in 2014, I got certified to be a personal trainer. And like I said, I started working at a gym. A year later, I launched my online personal training business. And within three months of launching that, I was totally online full time and was not working at a gym anymore. And here we are now, we're gonna cut right to the chase. How did you know that you wanted to have your own personal training business and what were the steps you took to get there. Before I wanted to have my own personal training business, I actually wanted to open a gym. I guess I should back up and say I was working as a personal trainer at Any Type Fitness for about a year before I took my training online. And that's where I was working actually when I started doing online training. And I guess it was just because after a year of working in the gym, I started getting a lot of requests online because my social media following had like started to grow a little bit and I'd had a lot of people saying at like asking if I was gonna start online training anytime soon so I figured okay like I guess I might as well. What program did you go through to become certified in personal training? Also how did you know you were ready to train others? I got certified through NASM which is like one of the probably like top three or top five certification programs for becoming a personal trainer. I mean you can become a personal trainer for like 50 bucks online and take a course like over over the weekend and then you're certified but I wanted like an actually respected certification pretty much any gym would accept an NASM certification not every gym is gonna accept like the $30 certification program you paid for and finished over the weekend a lot of gyms are not gonna accept that how did I know I was ready to train others I didn't <laughs> it's totally different to have all of the knowledge about training a person and then actually do it in a gym setting any job you just kind of like learn as you go and you just use the knowledge that you do know along with stuff that you learn about like actual practice of the knowledge that you have and you just you just get it do you ever turn clients away if so why yes I do turn clients away on my website I explicitly say first of all if you're under 18 I'm not gonna work with you I say that I don't work with people who have eating disorders basically. That doesn't say that if you've had an eating disorder in the past or you've had issues with it in the past that I'm not gonna work with you, but I definitely kinda like feel it out and interview you a little bit to see like, okay, is this like something from like six years ago or is this something from like six weeks ago? How did you learn to train people in person after receiving your certification? There's so much that you're just not gonna know until you actually become a trainer and train clients. And so I always say to anybody who wants to be like an online coach, you've gotta get some experience inside of a gym helping people in real life because so much of how you're going to try to train your clients is you're gonna do stuff that's worked for you and there's gonna be some stuff that like technically should be true across the board about people you know how they're supposed to be gaining weight how they're supposed to be losing weight how to put on muscle what certain exercise activates this particular muscle group but you're gonna realize like if you work in a gym you'll realize very quickly that like the rules of fitness just do not apply straight across the board and I guess I can probably say that just because I've worked with so many people first in a gym and now online that all the rules about fitness like they just they're not always rules in real life like there's always gonna be a ton of outliers there's always gonna be people that just surprise you with how their body responds to stuff how their body doesn't respond to stuff But it's so much easier when you have the in-person experience and then to take that online So that's definitely something that I recommend is that if you want to do online coaching Go work at a gym for like at least three months if you can six months because that in-person experience is Going to change everything about how you deal with your clients online. What is your opinion on training clients? giving macro plans and eight-week workout consultations, etc 
without any certifications. Is that okay in your opinion? Like before I got my certification, I would still get emails from people asking my opinion about their workout plan, their fitness plan and stuff. And I would tell them like, I'm not certified, but based on what I know from my research, you know, this is kind of what I think, that's kind of what I think. I would never give anybody a workout plan or give any like, actual like I would never give anybody a macronutrient split as far as I remember I don't I didn't do that um, in my opinion if you're gonna actually make like a business or a living out of this and you really stand behind your information just get certified like show the people that you're working for that you take yourself seriously and you take the information that you're giving seriously by getting certified it just to me like it just lacks professionalism and integrity to not have a certification and start giving out macro plans, nutrition plans and stuff like, and it has nothing to do with whether or not you have the information to help people. Like I get it, there are people who aren't certified that have more information than I have even. It's just not about that. In my opinion, if you're running a business from a business standpoint, like get yourself covered. Do you get lots of companies reaching out to you to promote products? If it's something sketchy or not your style, how do you turn them away? How do you turn them down in a professional way? Maybe this is bad of me, but a lot of times when companies send me products that I'm not interested in, I just don't respond. I, f um, I mean, if they send me a message and it's it's very personal and it's like, we just watched your video on YouTube and we think you're great and we want you to endorse our product, then I'll send a personal message. But a lot of these is just some companies send out like a mass email to like all these YouTubers or Instagram people and they didn't even personally like look at me like some dude in their marketing program added my name to a list and that's why I'm getting this email. So most of the time I don't respond if it's not something I'm interested in. As for do I get lots of companies reaching out to me to promote products? Yes, I would say maybe anywhere between like 20 and 30 emails a week uh, just for people to ask me to promote products. And as you guys see, I don't have a lot of products on my page. I say I maybe like once a month i'll actually say yes to a product probably less than that i think i've accepted like less than 10 things ever over the course of my instagram account and i don't want my instagram account to just be like buy this buy this if it's something that i actually believe in or like truly love or is something that i knew of like before they sent it to me like yeah i'm happy to like take the product to promote it but otherwise like that's not really what I'm into. If you could talk about having the confidence to actually make your dreams a reality, I work a nine to five, very comfortable, and the thought of taking a leap from office life to working for myself is very scary. I get this all the time from people who are saying that they wanna do something online, and it doesn't even have to be like online training. It can just be like, they wanna open like an Etsy shop or something. They wanna do some other form of business online. And I always say like, you don't have to like quit your job to start doing this. When I start, first started doing online training, I was still working in a gym. I worked at a gym for the first like two and a half months of having an online personal training business. You just do both. You don't have to quit one job and think you're gonna put 40 hours a week into a blossoming business, especially an online business. There's so much less behind the scenes work that goes into it. So if you wanna start something, like just start it. You don't have to quit your job. You don't have to like, you're not investing that much. You're just investing some of your extra time for me it wasn't that big of an investment. It was like, I'm just gonna put this out there. If people wanna work with me, great. If not, then hey, like maybe I just look like a fool on the internet, who cares? So I always tell people, because I think they forget about that middle ground. They think like, oh, well, if I'm gonna like become an online trainer, I have to like quit my job and like go for months without a true income and all this stuff. That's just not the case. Like just, just start it. And if it grows to where you can't do your full-time job anymore, then quit your full-time job or go to part-time or something, you know, like you're fine. You'll do it, you'll be fine. How did you gain most of your following? How long did it take you? So I've never really been like follower hungry. That's gonna sound like so like, I'm sure like half of you are like, yeah, right Lynette. But I really haven't. <laughs> and there's very few like milestones of followers that I actually remember getting because like, I won't really look at my follower, like number of followers. I'll look at it like maybe like once every other week and I'll be like, oh, I have like X amount of followers now. I do remember that I hit 5,000 followers June of 2015 because I hit 5,000 the day that I competed in my first bodybuilding competition. So that one I remember because I was like, oh my gosh, like it's my first competition and I hit 5,000 followers on Instagram. And at that point I'd been posting for like two years. So like it wasn't like I started my account and three months later I had 5,000 followers. No, like I'd been posting for two years and it took me two years to get 5,000 followers. Just because I wasn't like, I wasn't trying. Like I wasn't really communicating with a bunch of people in the fitness community. I wasn't commenting on other people's stuff. I was just kind of like doing my thing, whatever. And that's still kind of what I've done from then until now. So from June 2015 until June 2016, it's not July, but I now have like 30,000, 32,000. I don't remember. I don't remember. But I have 
like 25,000 ish more so why did the first two years I only got 5,000 followers but then in one year's time I got 25,000 I started paying attention to the photos I was posting I started paying attention to like what the vibe was for my Instagram like Previously, I just kind of posted whatever I wanted. It didn't have to be fitness related. I just like posted whatever. Um, and this year I actually paid attention to what people um, commented on, what people seemed to like a lot. And I posted more of that stuff. Someone else had asked a question like if I think about what I'm gonna post. And yes, nowadays I do. I do still primarily post what I want. Like it's definitely not like a thing where I schedule out my posts or anything like that. I kind of am just like going through my day to day life and if I see something relevant, I'll post it. And um, I actually just started using hashtags. I just like, <laughs> I like literally never use hashtags other than like the stupid ones that I would like put in my caption like that were 57 letters long. So like I wasn't really trying to use a hashtag. I was being ridiculous. But I just started ac actually using hashtags like where you do like all the dots in the paragraph and then you have this big old chunk of hashtags and I think that's actually helping me grow a little bit but yeah I never did that until literally like a month ago and that was like me attempting to get better at doing the fitness Instagram thing but yeah I don't know I don't know why my Instagram account grew I never really like reached out and became buddies with anybody in the fitness community like all the cool people on like Instagram and YouTube were like the cool fitness people if, I, if I'm friends with any of them it's because they like came to me and were friendly to me like I don't know what it is I'm really anti-social online I like talking to the people who comment on my stuff but I just never ever comment on anybody else's stuff so like if you are like a fitness person who's like always commenting on my stuff and you're wondering like does Lynette hate me she never comments on any of my stuff no nope, I'm just really anti-social on the internet and I just like stay in my little bubble it's not you it's me so yeah I did not answer that question at all you should probably ask someone who like has actively tried to grow their Instagram account really big I don't, I mean, there's like normal things, like obviously using the hashtags, there's, you know, if you like pay people to shout you out or you do like shout out for shout out, again, all of that has just always felt like super, super salesy to me and super like, I don't know, it just feels weird trying that hard to get followers and it, usually, I think I talked about this in my last video, you're going to get a different type of following. Um, versus if you're doing it what the way I've done it, which is like, I've not really tried to get followers. I just kind of let whoever wants to show up, show up. And that's definitely gotten me a more organic following as opposed to just like follow happy people from, you know, some fitness inspiration Instagram account that's shouted me out. Like how you go about, I should say how you go about trying to get followers is going to determine the type of following that you have. So you could have like 50,000 followers, but if they all kind of came from like shout out pages or like some other source that's not like really similar to who you are you're gonna have a bunch of people following you that like don't care who you are don't even know your name like just follow you because you're hot or wh whatever it is that you offer and those are not gonna be the kind of people who are gonna be paying for your services like straight up they're just not because they don't care I will say that like probably 80% of the clients that come in will usually have like a beginning paragraph of I follow you on YouTube or I've been following you on Instagram, I really like you, I like your husband, I like your cat, I like you, whatever. They come to me for me. It's not like some random person just showed up on my page and immediately wanna, wanted to work with me. It just doesn't work like that for the most part. I feel like I went off on a big tangent with that. I hope that was helpful. How do you stay motivated to get stuff done while working from home and being your own boss? It's definitely tough. It's not as tough now as it used to be because I've made like a really strict schedule for myself, like a very strict schedule. Like I have a like a Sunday plan, a Monday plan, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Like those are my five work days. And I have like a structured plan of like what I do those days and what has to get done. And that's how I'm able to like continually run my business. A lot of people kind of think that online training is like this cool thing where like you can just work whenever and do whatever you want. And you have all this free time to just come and go because you work from home and you're your own boss. And maybe if you have like a smaller business, you can do that. Or if you only have like a dozen clients, you can do that. But for me, if I don't literally like have like rigid structured times that I make myself sit down on my desk and do all of my work like it would just overwhelm me and I would be continually overwhelmed by all the stuff that I had to do so I say coming up with a schedule for yourself and being like unflinchingly rigid about it to the point where like when my clients sign up with me I literally tell them my work schedule and I'm like this is when I'm at my desk this is when you can expect to hear from me if I ever am away from my desk on like my normal work days I usually will send like a 
company-wide email to all of my clients saying like I'm gonna be out of town or whatever the case is and that's rare that I even take time off so I guess you just have to get some discipline man like without a boss there telling you what to do without having like a set deadline for a lot of stuff you've got to just like come up with mental deadlines in your head like I don't let uh, emails just sit there for more than X amount of hours once I've received them if someone purchased a consultation on one day then I would make sure that it's completed by day number X like I have these little rules for myself and I like don't like, don't break them. At what point do you think someone is ready to get their personal training certification? I think you can be ready at any point. I got my personal training certification. I had, When I got it, I never intended to actually use it. I mean, I hoped I would use it, but at that time I was making pretty good money working in real estate. I felt like real estate was where like the real money was at because let's be real, working in a gym, it's really hard to make a good living. So I wanted to get my certification for so long, but I was like, what are people gonna think? Like. Are people gonna be in, like think I'm stupid for trying to make money with like fitness? I don't know. I was so hung up on it. I wanted to get my uh, certification for months, and I was so afraid of what people were gonna think. Like I don't know why. And then one day my husband was like, "Dude, just get it. Like if you never use it, then you just know a bunch of stuff about your favorite subject in the world. So why don't you just get it? It's like just because you get it doesn't mean you have to use it or that you like for sure leaving your job and changing your life. Like just get it." It's, you know, if there's cheaper certifications, there's the NASM one. I think the one that I got was like somewhere between like six to eight hundred dollars. It could be more now. I got mine three years ago, two years ago. But yeah, just get it. There's no right time. Like, knowledge is awesome. And having the knowledge for yourself just means that you can help yourself further, even if you never do anything like professionally with your certification. What is the best way to stay current on fitness, exercise, and nutrition? There are going to be trends in fitness that you should know about and then there's also going to be some just like information that just never changes no matter what the trends are no matter what is popular like and it's good to know the stuff that just like never changes like the stuff about the human body like there's gonna be trends that come and go like there's gonna be fad diets there's going to be you know flexible diet clean eating meal plan all that stuff those are all to some degree like trends they're not new information about the body it's just a way to manipulate the body to get a certain result and they just happen to be what's popular right now in 10 years from now something else will be popular five years from now something else will be popular but the human body remains the same so i'm constantly learning about the human body just so that i understand it better and also like I, you know, I go to bodybuilding.com. I pay attention to what other fitness people are posting on their Instagram. I pay attention to um, the really big fitness coaches in the industry. My favorite guy, Lyle McDonald, and I know I've mentioned him before, but he's like so awesome. I used to be super big on Lane Norton, um, and I was reading a ton of his stuff, and his stuff was really relevant at the time that I was reading it. Not that it's not relevant now, but I just don't agree with a lot of his like philosophy, and I agree a lot more with Lyle McDonald's stuff. So I read a lot of his stuff, and he goes, He's very up to date about what's popular right now, what people are doing right now, how they're dieting, what is popular with exercise, and he also like will kind of like debunk everything. Like, you know, he'll tell people like the truth about low carb, he'll tell people the truth about low fat, the truth about powerlifting, like what it's actually doing to your physique, like all this stuff just because he knows so much and he's written books and he's written articles and he has an awesome website. So, um, that's how I stay up to date. I definitely never stop learning or think that like what was in my textbook for my certification is like enough information to get me by. Not the case at all. Uh, I'm always learning not only like with other research and articles, but with the clients that I'm with. Every client is like just new material for me to try stuff on, see what happens, and then see trends with age groups, with body types, with um, whatever. And it's that's that is constant research for me. How do you handle clients who mess up on their diet and do it repeatedly? Do you get frustrated? I'm internally might get a little bit frustrated, but I never get outwardly frustrated with my client, or at least I try not to. I'm not a tough love type coach. That's not the way I operate. And I think it's because of coaches who are really hard on their clients who mess up that a lot of people start getting a complex about food and people start feeling shame and anxiety around food is because they've had somebody make them feel bad about their food decisions. I will never, ever, ever like yell at a client, tell them that they've made a mistake, make them feel bad about anything that they've done. Like a client could literally like fall off the face of the earth for like 10 days and eat just straight garbage for 10 days. And I've had, I've had many clients do that. And when they come back, I'm like, all right, are you ready to go? Like, I'm, <laughs> I don't care what you did for the last 10 days. Like, that's not my concern. Like. You do what you gotta do to deal with that internally, and I'm here to help you with your personal training needs. Usually a client feels so bad about what they've done anyway, like for me to add on top of that, 
makes them now afraid to trust me, afraid to like confide in me when they have made mistakes with their food. So I, I hold my clients accountable to a degree. If it's a client that I know like this is not normal behavior for, it kind of just depends on the situation. If they like went to a birthday party or like some family event and they just ate a bunch of stuff, I'm like, it's life, like that happens. Like I don't do a ton of like bikini prep clients. So 99.9% .9 of my clients are just normal dieting clients. So like if you mess up one day, it's just not a big deal. Um, if I find a client is like repeatedly overeating, then I try to work with them like why is this happening like and not even like a patronizing sense or like a trying to make you feel bad sense but like let's get to the bottom of this like are you an emotional eater are you an anxious eater like okay so what can we do to try to like find other things to do like I will try to work with them on it um, but if I notice a client is like actually binge eating not like emotional eating but like truly binge eating or doing some other sort of like food disorder type behavior again like I mentioned like that's kind of where I draw the line and I'm like look I, I'm not a therapist I can't sit here and coach you through 12 weeks of eating disorder behavior that's not my job and not my qualifications I do recommend you seek professional help for whatever your issue is and again I'm sounding so serious and mean as I'm saying this but I'm totally like I'm like your friend like we're cool I'm gonna be so nice about how I deliver this message but I am gonna kick you out of my team <laughs> I think a lot of personal trainers, online trainers, try to be therapists, they try to be nutritionists, they try to diagnose eating disorders. That is not your job, stay in your lane. What do you do and how do you react when clients quit? I think one of the biggest pieces of advice that I try to give every single online coach, because I've experienced when coaches are not like this, but basically don't take your client's failure or them giving up personally. Don't let yourself get into a funk where you feel like they're trying to upset you or even let yourself get upset about their failures. Like I've had clients quit on me. I've had clients be like, look, this just isn't for me. Um, I'm just going to move on. And that's fine. I know like I'm not going to be everybody's best friend. Not everyone's going to get along with me. Not everyone's going to like me. Not everyone's going to like my training style. That's okay. And I think at first I might have like taken some of that stuff a little more personally and been like, well, why don't they want to work with me? Like, I thought I was a good coach. I guess now I'm, I'm confident that I am a good coach and that I can help a lot of people. And so when somebody just isn't a good fit for me and that's why they leave, it just doesn't bother me. I figure, hey, like I want you to go find who does work for you. Like that's the goal here is for you to get to where you want to be, not to like be my best friend. When I have clients quit because they just don't want to do it anymore like they are sick of losing weight and stuff again it's like this is your life man like you do what you want to do like if a client does quit it's usually because they're like feeling anxious about dieting now it's like no longer enjoyable to them they just feel like they're missing out on life and at that point I'm like okay well you do need a break like this is not the time for you to diet you should leave me and go live a normal life of not tracking stuff and just being a human and I want you to do that. So people will leave you for a million reasons and most of the time it's not because you're not actually a good coach. You just might not be for them. Do you set certain boundaries or client contact parameters up front? Yes. <laughs> if you have more than like 10 clients, you really, really should do this. When I first started training, of course, I had two days. I've always tried to take Thursdays and Fridays off, but I never like officially announced that to my clients. I would just kind of like pull back those days. And I was always talking on YouTube and Instagram about how Thursdays and Fridays were my day off. So like a lot of my clients just knew, but I would feel guilty if I wasn't constantly checking my phone, constantly like going through my emails on Thursdays and Fridays. So as I got busier as a coach and like started taking on more and more clients, it was impossible to stay on my inbox on Thursdays and Fridays or else people would not get a response from me for like over 48 hours, which just made me so nervous. And like, I would be on my phone 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night. If a client texted me at two in the morning, I would answer. And again, when I only had like 15, 20 clients, like it wasn't the end of the world. I didn't have people text me around the clock or anything, but as my business grew, like, yeah, I was never off my phone. And I think it was, I think it was like last fall when I started getting really burnt out. And not burnt out as in like I didn't enjoy my job anymore, but like I felt like my clients were all living in my house with me. <laughs> and I felt like I never had time to myself or time where I could just like clock out. Like, and that's the thing with owning your own business is that you really don't ever get to clock out. You really are just on the clock all the time because you're always thinking about your work. You always have an email to answer. You always have a text to respond to. There's never like a time where you're like, yep, yeah, I'm done for the day. Like you're never done for the day. Um, and so I think it was around November, December, I think I sent like a email out to all my clients and then I started including it in my initial programming that I send to clients that, you know, I work Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Saturday. So those are my five work days. Those are the days I will answer your emails and I will answer your texts. 
Um, I work from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you email me on Thursday or Friday, you're gonna have to wait till Saturday. I was afraid to do that because I was like, oh my gosh, like for two whole days, they can't get a hold of me. But like really, there are no personal training emergencies. And if it is an emergency, you just should not call me, you should call 911. And I've actually not had any clients complain about it whatsoever. In fact, most of my clients, if they do accidentally text me on an off day or whatever, like immediately apologize, like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, it's your off day. Like they get it, like I have a life too. Like my whole life isn't just YouTube and Instagram, despite what you might believe. And it helps me like be like totally 100% there on my work days because I'm like, it's work day. But then when I'm on, um, you know, when it's Thursday and Friday, I can like relax and chill with my husband and not be thinking about work for once a little bit. Insurance, liability, contracts, oh my. Any insight to any of those would be amazing. As in, what are considerations with covering yourself liability wise? Again, I think that this is like a state by state thing. For me, there's like liability, fine line print, on anything that I send to a client, you know, saying that I'm not liable for this, that, and the other. You should keep a personal trainer's insurance that also is like second backing of coverage because like in this country, no one's really safe from being sued. But yeah, that's really the best thing that I can say. I mean, I guess all I should say is like, don't just like send plans out, workout plans, diet plans to people without having any kind of like disclaimer. You should always have a disclaimer. So I would check with like a business lawyer or meet up with someone to get like an LLC or something because that's all of that stuff is like what I did and I did a lot of my own research to make sure that I am covered no matter what would happen. That's that's all I'll say about that. You really should do your own research for that. All right, I got so many questions and I think that I'm probably gonna have to make this like two videos, but I didn't wanna wrap it up now because I answered everything I think I can answer. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you guys in that and and hopefully I answer some questions that you guys had, maybe that you were wondering about whether you're trying to open your own business or you were curious how I run mine and how I treat my clients. Hopefully this was helpful in some way, shape, or form. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Bye guys.